everyone, Cultist Commander here, and today I'm gonna be talking about. Well, first I'm gonna be talking about the Vanguard story, and then second I'm gonna in the second half I'm gonna be uh talking about COD in general, like mainly Modern Warfare 2 and COD uh 2023. But uh yeah, so I'm not gonna go too in depth with like the first part of the Vanguard story because a lot of what it is is just like slightly altered um actual historical World War II events until they get like Project Phoenix because that's entirely fictitious. But then like I'll just talk about the main parts and then and then I'll go in depth with season story and zombies. But uh so for the first part of the campaign um it's the the campaign is mostly just broken up into flashbacks uh where we get to see how each of the characters became who they were and why they're a part of Task Force Vanguard so um Riggs is in North Africa and then part of his campaign he finds uh Project Phoenix documents Polina is in Stalingrad, so the Eastern Front, um, you know, as she is Russian. And then she kills uh, Steiner, not to be confused with Black Ops Steiner, but a different Steiner who is related to Project Phoenix. Um, I, for I forget his name. Wade is... Uh, on the Pacific front, you know, he's a great pilot, and then, and then, and then Kingsley and his right-hand man, uh, are on the Western front, and they, and they help with the Merville and D-Day, mainly Merville, but, like, that's right before D-Day, um, and then, and then throughout the campaign, we get those backstories, and then we get uh, them coming together on the train, and it's on 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 the train going into Hamburg. It's Polina, Wade, Riggs, um, Novak, who you play as for just that mission, uh, because he's beaten by Freisinger to death. Um, Kingsley and Kingsley's right hand man. And then, for the rest of the campaign, until the, near the end, Wade is separate from them, but they are in a Fourth Reich prison, essentially, in holding, and they're being interrogated, and that's why we're getting these backstories, uh, because that's part of the questioning that they're under. Um, but then they kill their uh, captor, Wade blows a hole in the... No, like... Wade gets brought back in later and then blows a hole in the wall. Um, Kingsley's right-hand man gets killed. And then they go through Berlin to the airport. Um, and then they kill Freisinger and they get on the plane. And then they find uh, classified Fourth Reich Project Phoenix documents. There's... Project Nova, which is just Nova 6. Um, Project Ether, Reviving the Dead, and then just hella gold. Just so much. And then they also find, like, documents relating to a V2 rocket facility. Oh, and, and by the way, by the way, they, the person who um, sets them up on this mission is Captain Butcher from Co the Quartermaster from Call of Duty World War II. Um, he does not show up in the campaign at all, despite technically being the main character. So yeah. Um, and then season one, the story, they say 1944, but that like literally just immediately breaks canon. Because it's like, oh, here's Task Force Trident, which all the task force were, task forces were created after Vanguard, which was created in 1945, 
But they're like, oh, here's Task Force Trident in 1944. So, yeah. Um, so, just slight retconning that. Just act as if it's 45. Because that is the only way that this makes sense. Um, so, yeah. Butcher and Task Force Trident, they're flying in the Pacific, right? Get shot down over Caldera. The Task Force is separated from Butcher. He stumbles on a Reich bunker. Goes right in. Just right next to where the plane has crashed. It's just buried under the sand. And then he gets in. And then, um... In that bunker, he finds documents on Project Nebula. Which is incredibly similar to Nova 6. Because it is also poison gas. And it is also represented with that greenish-yellow color. But it's a separate thing. Also created by the Reich. So, yeah. Um, and then Season 2, a different task force, Task Force Yeti, um, and Butcher, they go to the Alps, and then they try and find Nebula. And the, like, the castle that they're in kind of gets flooded with the gas. Um, yeah, and then they just drive away in a tank. Um, now, the next part of this is where it's, like, iffy as to whether or not it's canon. I will say, I don't consider seasons 3 or 5 to be canon. Season 4 is, like, I guess it's okay that this is canon, but, like, you'll see why in a second whenever I explain the season 3 story. Okay, so Season 3, for those of you who don't know, um... Another Task Force, Task Force Harpy, is on Caldera, and... And, like, they... This is also after the Reich detonate Nova bombs around the world, and poison... Countless cities. This is... Yeah. Um, also, supposedly, like, if the Operation Monarch stuff is canon, this is taking place in 1951 that this is happening. This is after World War II is over. This is... This is not... This is not World War II anymore. This is a little bit after. Which, I mean, like, I guess that's fine, because the whole point of this story was that they were hunting down the remnants of the Reich. But, like, I don't think that they should be powerful enough to be detonating bombs globally. If they are the remnants of the Reich. But, uh, yeah. So, if that is to be believed, they blew up bombs around the world, poisoning hundreds, if not thousands, of people. Um, and then, those bombs, for some reason, also got detonated on Caldera. There is no reason why Caldera should be as prominent in the story as it is. It is just some island in the middle of nowhere, but yet everything revolves around the island on this story. Like, at least Verdansk made sense, because Verdansk was, like, an important place during the Cold War and the modern day. Because in the Cold War, um, that was the battle where Stitch and, uh, that, like, it wasn't, the story wasn't centrally focused on Verdansk in Cold War, but then it went to Verdansk because that's where Stitch was working on broadcasting the numbers from. And then Adler blows it up, which was which was referenced in Modern Warfare 2019, where Nikolai's like, oh, East and West rebuilt Verdansk after the Cold War. And then in Modern Warfare 2019, the entire story is focused around uh, Verdansk, like, in the seasons. Right? Caldera, it is the central focus, but, like, there is nothing that establishes Caldera in the campaign or anything. It's just... Oh, we decided that we're going to have our uh, map take place on a tropical island in the Pacific, which is fine. But then they're like, let's focus the entire story on that. Like, as the seasons go on. But they don't explain the significance of Caldera. 
Okay, but sorry, I distracted from the main point. So they detonate these bombs, right? And it awakens something giant. And something giant, by that I mean Godzilla and King Kong. Which, like, zombies is canon. But, like, the whole thing about that is they come from another dimension, dude. They're from the Dark ether. They are not from this world. Godzilla and King Kong are in this universe, hypothetically, like, if this season is canon. Which I'm saying it probably isn't. It, like, I guess you could say that the Nova bomb- or the Nebula bombings- See, exactly, I said Nova, because they are the same thing, basically. The Nebula- you could- you could just just- say that that happened like i mean there's probably so many more implications that like that screws up but for the sake of the argument let's say that that's canon godzilla king kong does not make sense even then because it's like why money the event was not that great i'm gonna be honest like i mean it was kind of cool you know like i was hyped but like actually playing it it was just like whatever meh but, like, they gave it a whole story trailer, so I, like, I'm assuming they were, like, I, I don't know, they, they wanted to put a story behind it, and I mean, they did, but, like, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense. Like, there are way worse things that happened in the COD storyline. Like, I know, obviously, they had only the rights for Godzilla, like, this game. But I feel like there are so many other events that have happened that Godzilla and King Kong should have showed up. Like, if this is them being awakened by the Nebula bombs, like, I feel like they should have woken up several other times. So, the, just, them existing in this world also brings up the, uh, you know, how the Monsterverse, they have Hollow Earth, and that's canon. And that would make that canon to this. And there are, like, no hints that that's even a thing. Not even in Zombies, by the way, which has, like, in Vanguard Zombies, which, like, even though the uh, gameplay wasn't the greatest, they have really good lore. They're like, oh yeah, the Dark Aether Entities, people believed that they were, like, the Greek gods and, like, no Norse gods and Roman gods. They never once make reference to Hollow Earth. So, like, we could just assume that that's not canon and that's just the crossover. But, like, they gave it a story trailer. So, there. And now, um, we flash forward to the 70s. Uh, and, and I will say that because Fortune Keep takes place in the 70s because it's, like, Operation Dragon's Cove, I believe. Which, so, yeah, we're, we're, the cutscene still takes place on Caldera, though. So, a helicopter carrying gold from Fortune's Keep crashes on Caldera, and then, um, uh, so, the people who were former members of, uh, Butcher's Task Forces, being, like, Kingsley and a few others, they split off, and apparently they become, like, soldiers of fortune, mercenaries, um, because they are fighting against Butcher for this gold. Which, like, I mean, I guess you could say that's canon. There's nothing that it really conflicts with, but, like, why? Why are they fighting? Kingsley is, like, the honor character. Like, literally, he's just like, Oh, I'm an upstanding gentleman. I am the leader. There's no point in his storyline, like, throughout the campaign, or any of his, like, quips and stuff in multiplayer, that it, like, would suggest that he's like, Oh, yeah, money? I will take that over everything. No. So there is no reason, unless the implication is that Butcher turned against them, but I don't think that's the case because the story is told from Butcher's perspective. So let's just assume that he's not a liar and that Kingsley did turn against them. Why? That just ruins his character. Why? And like, I mean, I can give Vanguard a pass because the team, first of all, had, like, a year to make this. And then they were... The story team left. 
They left while doing the Warzone story. So that's why it's a mess. So, like, they had someone else come in and fix things up. And by fix things up, I mean screw it over entirely. But, uh, yeah, and that's also related to COD 2023 in a way. But I'll get into that in the later part of the video. So now, back to Season 4. Um, yeah, so they are, like, on the opposite sides of each other. And then they're fighting. And then apparently neither of them dies. Um... Oh, and another thing, I forgot to mention that this story is told from Butcher's perspective. I said that, but he's telling it to the people from Black Ops Cold War for, like, no reason. Because at the end of Black Ops Cold War's story, they were like, oh, how are we going to set up Vanguard? Here, let's have Butcher go to Verdansk, be in a Reich bunker, and uh, he's just hanging out in there. And then, conveniently, luckily... The city explodes, exposing the bunker, so that's how he got in there, because there was just, like, giant cracks in there. I don't know if he just knew the bunker was gonna be there, but, like, he was just in there, you know? 80-something-year-old butcher is just hanging out in this, in, in this old ex-Reich bunker, and then, uh, Adler, Woods... Mason, Hudson, they all go in there to investigate, and they find out he's in there, and, like, they're about to kill him. They're aiming their guns at him, and he's like, Relax, gents. We're on the same side. Any good knows when to and then he was like, If I wanted to kill you, you'd already be dead. Meanwhile, he has a 1911. They have, like, machine guns. No, he, no, they aren't already dead, dude. Like, I don't care that your face got blown up by tank shrapnel. You are not. You are not taking them down, dude. I don't care who you think you are, Butcher. It's not gonna happen. Not Mason, not Woods, not Adler, not Hudson. You're not doing it, buddy. You could barely take out one of them on your own. All four at once? Not gonna happen. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, so then he just starts telling them the story of Caldera for no reason. He's like, You ever heard of Vanguard? I created Vanguard. And all the others too. You see, our job wasn't done until we snuffed out every last spark. Like, I mean, that's cool set up the story, yeah. And, like, I like Butcher, actually. Like, I really do. In, in like, his little geezer quips, I like him. But, like... They waste this character, I feel. Like, they just, they misuse him. He could be way cooler, but they just throw him all over the place. And they're like... Oh yeah, he's the leader, he's, he's part of the SOE, you know, he, he's the guy who created the task forces. Cool. He's not in the story mode, and then, he's like, while he is there, in the, ta like, in the each season cutscene, they are mainly focused on the task forces that he just creates so that he can do these jobs. I have a feeling most of the jobs he can do on his own. He can't, like... He just creates these teams for the sake of creating teams. And then each of those characters also gets wasted because they, like, never show up again. Except for Season 4, where they are his enemies. For no reason. Um, yeah. And then, and then also, like, he has no reason to be in the bunker in Verdansk. He's 80. Like... He, he's like 80-something whenever this happens. Like, you should not be bunker crawling, dude. And then, um... Oh yeah, and then Season 5 happens, which this is the one that's definitely not canon. Um, Menendez, Seraph, Rourke, and al -Assad go tra travel back in time to Caldera um, to blow up the volcano? And they're like, oh, we're going to show the good guys what it's like to be robbed of power. Butcher and his guys ha did nothing to you. You are attacking the wrong people. You want to go back in time, kill Woods. Go back in time, kill Captain Price. What did Butcher do to you? Like, there's no reason you should be blowing up this island, you absolute fucking buffoon. Like, there's no, there's no reason you should be doing this. Also, he has the laser gun from, like, the, I want to say the EM-1 or EX-1 from Advanced Warfare. 
Which, like, I mean, it's pretty decent. Like, it's a decent gun. Infinite ammo, sure. But, like, why? Why does he have this? Menendez. Buddy. What are you doing? <laughs> like, come on. And then, uh... Oh, yeah, and then Zombies is, like, really good. And I'm just gonna do the overview because, like, there is so much I can get into there. And, like, I say the story is really good, but, like, the gameplay is just not. And, and that is because, like, a splinter group of Treyarch is working on this. And not even the full team. Just, like, a few people. Um, but... So the first map, Special Operations Task Forces... Um, they, they get sucked in, like, they're just trapped within a rune spell in a few places. It takes place right before the Marvel invasion, like, the night before. Um, so basically, uh, Overfear of Wolfram Von List and Court Effects trap you and Professor Craft in the rune spells. And then, you know, you gotta do the objectives to get out of there. And then, the only reason that, uh... Craft is even, was even working for, uh, Von List at any point is because Von List captured his Sasha, which is his, uh, lover, his gay lover, who he couldn't get married to, even though he called him a spouse, but, like, at the time, obviously, couldn't get married, which is rather unfortunate for him. Um, and then Terra Maledicta, you know, you go to the Egyptian desert where, like, near where Court Effects was found. You get the Decimator Shield. You get a few other things. You go back to Shinonuma, which was a part of Duran Fong. Um, and then you separate Seraxis from her artifact. Best map in the game. I mean, not, wait, I, I messed that up entirely. You don't ser separate Seraxis from her artifact. You find the relic that separated Seraxis from her artifact. Because you want to use that to separate Court Effects from his artifact in the final map, the Archon. Now, the Archon... The premise is awesome, and the boss fight is decent, but, like, the map itself is just Terra Maledicta round-based. Like, kind of lame. But, uh, so what happens is you do what you're supposed to do. You use the relic, you separate Court Effects from Bond List, you sever their bond, but Court Effects comes to the real world and is like, oh, uh, you know, I'm gonna... Like, basically destroy this place. I'm gonna become the Archon. Which is, like... Just be really uber powerful. He's like, I'm gonna become the Archon. And... But here, since, you know... Since you yeah, helped me do this, I'm gonna give you Von List. So then, Von List appears in front of Kraft. Uh, Kraft has his gun aimed at him. You know, and then... And then he's like, I'm gonna kill him. And then the... The Dark Ether entities are like, Don't do that, we need him. And then, after a little bit... Of, like, bonding time, I guess. At least in Von List's eyes. Um, he's like, Oh yeah, uh, sorry, Kraft, I killed Sasha. And then, and then Von, and then Kraft just shoots him dead. Like a real G. He just shoots him dead. And then, and then the ducky there, he's like, No, dude, we still needed him. And then he's like, whatever, the work is already almost done, we can do it. So then, you know, you go, you fight Court Effects, you kill him. And then, assumably, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Zykov from Cold War Zombies, because this is around the same time as that. Assumably, he goes in and, like, eats Court Effects, because he did eat Dark Ether Entities. So that's how he became the Forsaken. So, assumably, right after you kill, like, Court Effects, he, he just, like, eats him. Because he just falls into the depths of the Dark Ether. I, I, I'm assuming that's what happens. That's what the theory is. He could have eaten any big Dark Ether Entity, but I'm assuming it's uh, Court Effects. Oh yeah, so that is the story portion of this video done. Uh, let me transition over to a different rant. All right, so the, for this portion, this is the this is the part where we're talking about COD Modern Warfare 2 and COD 2023. And now COD 2023 um, was recently reported to be a separate game, even though it was like leaked a while ago that it was going to be an expansion for Modern Warfare 2. And the reason they did this is money. But also because they're like, oh, this is, we're working on multiplayer remastered stuff, and we're doing a whole new campaign. Maybe zombies, that's a big if. It's some other third mode they're definitely working on. And I mean, we heard recently, well, not recently, but like a little bit ago, that there's going to be something to do with zombies this year. So that might be a part of this. But it originally was going to be a Modern Warfare 2 expansion, but they're like, oh, there's so much content here. We're going to just 
say that this is a new game, charge full price for it because money, money, money. Um, which like, if that is like, if they um, if they actually do that, like they better put enough content in here to excuse that, or uh, I won't be buying. <laughs> which I mean, like, I'm sure the multiplayer remasters are gonna be good because, and like, the story is probably gonna be good, but like. Come on, dude. Vanguard barely had any post-launch content. Like, yeah, it was decent. Like, but you are scraping the bottom of the barrel. There were a few times in Vanguard where I genuinely really enjoyed it. Because, like, at first, whenever it first came out, I was like, this is so good. This is what the series needs. It's a, gr it's a pretty decent mix between stuff from Black Ops Cold War and and Modern Warfare 2019. I was like, I see the potential here. I really do. And I was I like I honestly was a fan of the World War II idea from the start. I was a fan. Because I liked COD World War II. I actually thought Sledgehammer did a decent job with that game. I used to play it a whole bunch. Obviously Vanguard's nothing like COD World War II. Except for the fact that most people think that it's a disappointment. That is the only thing that really, in my eyes, is similar. And obviously the setting of uh, being World War II. But I was like, oh yeah, you know, I thought they were pretty good. Um, and like, I was playing it a lot. Season 1, 2, I was like, okay, we could probably use a little bit more content here. But like, I'm enjoying it. Season 3? Godzilla and King Kong shows up. I see the trailer. I'm like, okay, this is hype, but you are you are so far off the rails, dude. Like, where did the story go? And that is, I I know COD is multiplayer shooter at first, but like, as a Zombies fan and as a fan of Black Ops, I love the story. And I thought Modern Warfare 2019 had a pretty good story. So I was like, and, and I, I thought the modern, or the Vanguard campaign was actually decent. Like, I mean, there were a lot of historical inaccuracies, but like, I thought it was decent, right? And then I was like, oh yeah, I want to see more. I actually like these characters. I want to see more. They didn't show up at all until season four, where just Kingsley shows up. Not Polina, not Wade, not Riggs, just Kingsley. And then he's like... The bad guy? Like, why? Sorry, I, I'm literally continuing my previous rant. But, I was like... And then they just barely added any content to the main game. They were focused on Warzone, and what they were doing for Warzone was alright at best. Like, Operation Monarch, while it was decent at some parts, it was like, also kind of a bore. Fortune's Keep, though. Fortune's Keep, and then Rebirth, uh, w whenever they did Rebirth Reloaded or Reinforced, I mean, that was peak. I absolutely loved that. But I wish the multiplayer got some kind of treatment where they made it good, but instead they were just like, oh, here's crossovers, here's anime skins, we're gonna be focused on Warzone this year. And it's like, come on, I paid how much for the game... And you're barely going to do anything with it. Modern Warfare 2 was looking promising, right? Modern Warfare 2 is not as good as I'd like. Like, I have fun with it. I'm not going to say I hate the game, because I don't. I'd be lying if I said that. But looking at the Season 2 roadmap, we are getting jack shit in the multiplayer department. There's, what, four maps. Two of them are, like ground war maps and like i mean i appreciate that for the ground war players but they're just ripped from al mazra they're not new and then multiplayer dome remake we just had dome last year in vanguard and then the museum from the beta of the game come on you can't excuse that as new content just because you had a legal issue and couldn't include it in the final game does not make it new like no, that that should have been launch content season one at the latest. Season one reloaded even. Or like some update in between. Not season two. But then you look at Warzone 2 
for season two. Um, here's new DMZ updates. Here's Ashika Island resurgence. All these new things, and it's like, yeah, that's great. I enjoy a Warzone. Okay, I am a Warzone fan, but I paid for this game, and you are giving me nothing. And now to hear COD 2023 to go from DLC to a full price game. This is also developed by Sledgehammer, by the way. And this is what what I mentioned earlier. Whenever I was like, they had to get thrown off the story from from Vanguard. They were shafted from that game, which they already were screwed over on because they were supposed to make Black Ops Cold War, which wasn't supposed to be Treyarch's game, which also Treyarch got screwed on because they were working on Black Ops 4, then had to come in for Sledgehammer and then make their game. So that became Black Ops Cold War, which is the best game we've had in a while. And then, and then they have to work on Vanguard. Treyarch also has to work on Vanguard. Like, call me a Treyarch shell, but why? Why do they have to keep doing this? And then, and then Sledgehammer also gets screwed over because they have to leave Vanguard to work on COD 2023, which is originally an expansion for Modern Warfare. What? Can't Infinity Ward do it? Infinity Ward also already had three years to work on Modern Warfare 2. Where is the product of this? Are they saving it for COD 2023? Because that is scummy. Oh, deliberately saving the content that you spent three years on and leaving us with crumbs? Who the hell do you think you are? And like people still keep buying it because they're like, oh yeah, they'll, they'll get it eventually. Like, no. Treyarch, I actually legitimately have faith in because they seem to care. Like, I mean, yeah, they're forced on all these other projects, but even then, they still try to put passion in. You can see the passion in Vanguard Zombies, even if it's not great. They have to work on the ranked modes for multiplayer for Vanguard Modern Warfare 2. Why? Can't the Sledgehammer Infinity Ward do ranked? Don't they know how? And then Raven? Let, you know, they should have their own game. They do all this work for Warzone, and then they're basically just doing it for... And then they're also a support studio, so they're just helping everyone else. Give them a chance to shine. They clearly have the passion. You know? Like, you could see it with what they do. They, like... You know, maybe not everyone likes the changes that they implement, but you could see that they try. Like, they actually listen to the community. They try. Right? COD 2023, if it is this expansion to Modern Warfare 2, so they're going to call it, like, I don't know, Modern Warfare uh, Ghost Story is Modern Warfare 3, whatever, because it is just an expansion of Modern Warfare. Market it however you want, but that's what it is. Like, if they're saving all this content that they had made, like, uh, forever ago for that, and then, you know, making a few new things... Come on, dude. Like, you really had to pull Sledgehammer for that? They had to... Like, Vanguard was so undercooked. You could have let them stay on their game. Maybe fix it. And they did try. Up until Season 1. And then they stopped. I'm assuming to work on COD 2023. But it's like... Come on. Like, I mean, I... I do love to see the interconnectivity of the developers, where it's like, oh, Treyarch games are connected to Infinity Ward games. Sledgehammer is also there. You know, like I appreciate them working together because that is their job. I I do appreciate that, but don't like throw them from one thing to another just because. Oh, Infinity Ward, uh, you know, they make Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare sells big. Uh, what does Sledgehammer have? Um, Advanced Warfare. It's World War Two. Uh, Vanguard, those weren't received well. Throw them off of Vanguard, because people don't like that. You know, instead of letting them fix it, throw them on, um, Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 2 DLC. That'll work. And then it's like, oh, uh, Treyarch, what are they doing? They got Black Ops 4, um, Sledgehammer and Raven, they're not really working out. 
Make them do COD 2020. Make them make Black Ops again. Screw over Black Ops 4 because it also wasn't received that well. Like, they don't take the time to fix it because they're forced onto these other things. And it, like, actually sucks. And then, what has Infinity War done recently? Modern Warfare 2019? Like, I enjoy that game. But... Like, as as much as I enjoy that game, and I think it has a really good multiplayer. I don't feel like that excuses them from the same kind of treatment that, uh... Sledgehammer and Treyarch have gotten. Like, why, why aren't we throwing, uh, Infinity Ward onto some other random project? Like, I'm, I'm not saying the, de the devs deserve that in any way. None of them deserve to be shafted from their own work to work on someone else's project. But, like, why has Infinity Ward been like, Oh, uh, we're working on Modern Warfare, so you can't touch us. Like, come on, dude. And then, um... I do actually have, like, a... I was talking about how I love the interconnectivity that they've been going for recently. I have, like, a really cool idea. And, like, it'll take us through all the eras of COD. And this is what... Obviously, this isn't what COD 2023 is going to be. It's probably going to be, like... A campaign DLC focused on Ghost. But then they turned it into a full game because there's also the multiplayer stuff. But like... What if the campaign was like... Okay, so you know how we had Vanguard and it was focused on Butcher, right? Well, in Cold War, they had Perseus, right? Perseus, as far as we know, in Cold War dates back to the Vietnam War. Well, what if... What if, um, it goes back further than that? And in the time between when, whenever, uh, whenever, um, Butcher's Task Forces, whenever they stopped going after the Reich, and before they turned over the fighting against each other, what if in that time, they found out a little bit about Perseus? So the first few stages are them looking into it. Now, they don't solve the Perseus problem. They don't come close. And then Black Ops Cold War, you know, we, we do slight retread there, but not by a lot. And then we see, oh, here's, um, the Black Ops guys, they think they've stopped Perseus. Stitch says otherwise, right? Here's modern day. Ultra-nationalists uh, with Makarov, let's say that they are a, they're connected to Perseus, right? Just hypothetically. This is... We see Captain Price and his task forces, they t meet up with, like, a really old Russell Adler, and he's like, oh, we thought we stopped them way back when, and we were wrong. They're still around. It's like, it's like cutting our head off a Hydra, you know? Another springs up right in this place. He wouldn't say that exactly, but, like, you get the idea. And then, t the Task Force 141, you know? They try and take out per Perseus. It, maybe they defeat Makarov, okay? Maybe they get him. Another Perseus is just gonna rise up. And that's when we get to the future CODs, and we bring back jetpacks. Just for those missions, by the way. Uh, and maybe a few multiplayer things. Don't make them a staple. Keep it. I uh, keep everything more so, like how it is in Modern Warfare 2019, Cold War, Vanguard, Modern Warfare 2. Keep it similar to that. But like, we see in the future, the um, it's focused around the people from Black Ops 3 and 4. And they're hunting a new Perseus cell, and that's how it's connected. They're all trying to hunt Perseus. And then, and then that also explains why the remastered multiplayer maps are from, like, various different developers, and it's, like, a best hits thing, since it is, um, since it is the 20th anniversary. It's best hits, so we get a few Sledgehammer maps, we get Treyarch, like, we get Nuketown, we get Firing Range, we get Hijacked, 
those are just the three most popular ones I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, we get maps from Modern Warfare 2. You know, we get Rust, we get... You get know what I mean? And then... It, it just gives a reason as to why they're there, as opposed to... Oh, we just... It's 20th anniversary. Here's an actual lore explanation. They're not all happening at once. Just this this map is in this time period. This map is in that one. That map is in the future. Um, and then and then that also gives us an excuse to throw these characters into Warzone and make money. Oh, here's Captain Butcher Operator again. Here's Black Ops. Here's Black Ops in the future. Here's new price skins. Like, come on, you know? And and maybe I am just a sucker for marketing. I don't know. Like, I'm... I feel like that would make them a lot of money if they did something like that. And then also, you know, how I was saying earlier, they were like... The rumors about new zombies content this year throw zombies in there and i know that's like literally i was like oh why does uh other devs have to work on this you know i feel like infinity ward and sledgehammer can work on the zombies to be honest like as a collaborative effort they could do it so treyarch doesn't have to treyarch can come in and give them like story elements you know they'll be like oh here's what you should do here here's what you should do there that's how it'll flow cohesively with our dark ether plan but don't make them directly in charge sledgehammer and infinity war i like <laughs> i won't say that world war ii zombies was the best but it was decent enough i had fun with it um infinite warfare zombies like zombies in spaceland is pretty good i enjoyed that but they should get another shot at zombies i feel both of them and not just make Treyarch do it. And like, yeah, we'll see the Treyarch influence, like, obviously, because they are helping with the story of it. But, like, only in the parts where it's like, we have to connect it back to the other story. That's where they're involved. Not in the main story itself. We can have Infinity Ward or Sledgehammer do that. And then, you know, they could work... That would be awesome. You know, like, having... Because the destruction of Verdansk is canon, let's see zombies on that map. Because I don't think the nuke killed them. You know, it just kept people from going within where the zombies were, but they definitely didn't die off from the nuke, I'm sure. So, like, maybe we could see uh, some operators going in there and uh, trying to take them out. And again, we're going to have... I want to see more operator interactions as well. If we're going to have them, and we're not going to have a set crew, I want to see them interacting with each other, the environment. I want to see that way more. I know that's a lot of effort, but I feel like they could pull it off. Because Cold War, in the later portions, had a lot of unique lines for the operators. Vanguard had a, quite a few, surprisingly. You know? And I feel like a game with this many hypothetical operators from different time periods, even if, like, if they could even have lines where they interact with each other, I feel like that'd be neat. Like, I mean, I I feel like, you know, obviously some of them would know each other, and then other ones would be, like, absolutely confused why, oh, this is modern day, why is that World War II geezer here? He, he like, should be dead in the ground. Why is he here? Oh, that guy from the future with his laser gun? Why is he here? And, like, they could... You know what I mean? And I feel like that would be awesome, and that would be the perfect game. Make it, like, a COD Mobile level, but at the same time... I, I Most of the, um... Like, it wouldn't all be canon. Like, obviously, the... The characters canonically wouldn't be with each other at the same time. But, like, I could say each individual event is canon to these characters. Uh, and they were there, and they know about it. But these characters weren't there because either they're dead or they aren't born yet. Or they, if it's the case of Modern Warfare, some of them are born yet. They're just babies, so they couldn't be there. You know, they could do something like that. And I think... Like I said, I think that would be the perfect game. You know, that would sell a lot. But 
that's not going to be COD 2023, because it's an expansion uh, to Vanguard, I mean, not to, to Modern Warfare, made by the people who made Vanguard after they were thrown off of it. So it's going to have, like, no time in the oven. It's not going to be good. It's going to be Vanguard 2. And with that, thank I thank you. Hopefully you enjoyed this long-form rant video. Um, hopefully you understood the first part because I was all over the place. Um, yeah, and if you know, if you want to see more of this content or any other things that I produce, consider leaving a like and subscribing only if you want to. It's greatly appreciated. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.